Now you will remember that vectors are physical quantities that have both magnitude and direction. And direction is very, very important. If you're dealing with a vector and you don't include the direction as part of your answer, you'll get your answer wrong. And add it onto that. If you are adding vectors, their directions need to be considered. So for example, if you have a box and someone is pushing that box to the right with a certain force and someone is pushing the box to the left with a certain force and we want to work out the net force, the direction of these vectors need to be considered. One person is pushing in what we will call the positive direction. The other person is then pushing in the negative direction. And those positive and negative directions need to be considered when working out the net vector, the resultant vector, the overall vector, which we will get to in a second. Single vectors are represented by an arrow. The length of the arrow represents the size or the magnitude of the vector. The arrow points in the direction that the vector is pointing in. But now getting to resultant vectors. What is a resultant vector? A resultant vector is the vector sum of two or more vectors added together. Or it's a single vector, so one vector, that has the same effect as two or more vectors together. What that means, for example, is as follows. As you can see over here, I have one force vector of 10 newtons to the right. If I add another vector of 35 newtons to the right, instead of writing those two separate vectors, vector one of 10 newtons to the right and vector two of 35 newtons to the right, I can represent both of those with a single vector. And as you can see, my single vector is the vector sum. Remember, sum means addition of those two vectors at the top. So 10 newton plus 35 newton gets you 45 newton to the right. Take note how the big red vector is the sum of the two smaller vectors. Is a different story when the vectors are not pointing in the same direction or if they're acting in opposite directions. We will still apply the same principles, so we still add them, it's still a vector sum, but then we need to consider positive and negative directions. So as you can see here behind me, I've mentioned that we are taking to the right as our positive direction. That means our 10 newton is positive, our 35 newton is positive, 10 plus 35 equals 45 newton, a positive answer means that our resultant or our final or our net vector is going to the right. What we did in that previous example to work out the net vector or the resultant vector is we used addition of vectors. Remember addition means plus, it means adding. And I wrote here that if vectors act on the same object at the same moment and in the same direction, we add those vectors to determine the net effect on the vectors. So that previous example that we had, that might be an example of two people pushing the same box, the forces are acting at the same point on the same object in the, at the same time, so we have to add those two vectors to get the overall or the net or the resultant force or the resultant vector. And it's very important to note that only the same type of vectors may be added together. So what I mean by the same type of vectors, remember we discussed different types of vectors. We get force vectors, we get acceleration, we get displacement, we get momentum, we get all sorts of vectors, but we can only add the same type of vectors together. So a force vector plus a force vector, we may add those. We can't add a displacement vector to a velocity vector. Those are two separate things. If we take a look at this example, we can see that I have two vectors, vector one acting down, vector two acting upwards. We still apply the addition rule. We're still going to add them together. However, because they're not going in the same direction, we need to consider positive and negative directions. As I wrote over here, I drew an arrow and I pointed it downwards and I said, choose a positive direction. So I'm choosing down as a positive direction. What that means is vector one is pointing downwards. So 10 meters, it looks like it is a displacement vector. 10 meters is going down, that's gonna be a positive 10. Because vector two is not going down, it's going up. It's going to be a negative vector. So when I work out the net, if I had to work out the net, so let's say V net, my net vector, I'm going to add them. I'm going to say V1 plus V2. You always start with vector addition 
because that is what we need to do. It's called vector addition. So we need to start with plus signs. However, V1 is going down and down is my positive direction. So V1 is going to be positive 10. Then we're going to add vector 2. Now remember, vector 2 is pointing up. Down was positive. So therefore, up is negative. So we're adding negative 2. 8, sorry, 10 plus minus 2. So basically, 10 minus 2 is 8. Positive 8 meters. And because my 8 is a positive answer, what is my direction? It's down. How did I know that? Because down was my positive direction. And that is essentially what is happening over here. You can see that I'm calling it adding or subtracting vectors. This is in order to find the net or the resultant vector. We always need to choose a positive direction. And when you answer this in your test, you need to indicate that positive direction on the top of your page. Now, for these examples that you see on the screen, we have chosen to the right as positive. And it says over here, use algebraic vector addition so it's always the sum the vector sum and that takes us back to our definition of a resultant vector it's the vector sum sum means add or addition it's the vector sum of two or more vectors added together so as you can see in all of these examples we have a plus sign because it's a vector sum and when we write this out in our examples and in our exam we always write out plus so vector one plus vector two force one plus force two. That's going to get us our net force. But it says here, substitute in with the correct signs. So that means that if my vector is pointing to the right, I'm going to add, I'm going to put a plus sign. Okay, it's going to be a positive vector. However, if my vector is going to the left, so take a look at the second example over here. So you see this vector over here is going to the left. That's why there's a negative here. So basically how this sum looks is it goes five plus minus 5. And I know that plus minus ends up being a minus, but because it's vector addition, we always write the plus first. So 5 plus minus 5, we know that's 5 minus 5 is going to be 0. So the net vector or the net force, let's pretend these are force vectors, is 0. If you look at example 1 over here, we've got 5 to the right, another 5 to the right. So it's 5 plus positive 5 is positive 10 to the right. Okay, you see there's no negatives because everything's pointing to the right. Over here, we get 5 plus 10. Again, the 5 is going to the right, so is the 10. They're both positive. You add them straight up, you get 15 to the right. If you look at this example over here, we've got 5. Let's pretend it's a newton. Let's pretend it's force. 5 newton to the right. Over here, I've got 10 newton to the left. We subtract that then. So it's plus minus 10. So how we would write this is we would say 5 plus minus 10. Why minus 10? Because my 10 newton is acting to the left. My 5 newton is acting to the right. Overall, that'll get me negative 5. Now we'll do this in more detail when we go over examples, but you can't leave your answer as a negative. What does a negative mean? You have to interpret your answer. If right, if to the right is my positive direction and I get a negative answer, it means that my answer is five newtons to the left. So you always rewrite your answer with a positive and you interpret what the negative means. In this case, the negative means left. And just remember, only the same type of vectors can be added together. In this example over here, I'm again working with force vectors. It's just easier to imagine a force vector and pretend that this is person number one and person number two, and they're pushing down on an object, the same object at the same time. Person one is pushing down with 80 Newton downwards. Person two is pushing with 20 Newton downwards. Take note that because I'm speaking about a force, which is a vector, I'm mentioning direction. 80 Newton down, 20 Newton down. You can see that my arrows are both pointing down and you can see that I've drawn the 80 Newton a bit bigger than the 20 Newton. This is definitely not drawn according to scale, but the 80 Newton I did draw bigger. Now on the left over here, I've shown a graphical representation of how these two vectors would look. This is what we call a tail to head or a head to tail diagram. I will go over this in another video. Make sure to check out the links in my description. But for now, let's focus on how to calculate the resultant vector. Now, remember, we need to choose a positive direction. Because both of my vectors are pointing down, I think it makes sense to choose down 
as my positive direction. And all you need to do is indicate on your page with an arrow that down is your positive direction. You can also write down as positive, but we generally use an arrow. Now, to work out the net force or the net vector or the resultant vector, we're going to say F net is equal to F1 plus F2. Remember, we always start off with plus, no matter which way the vectors are pointing, because of vector sum. The definition of a resultant vector is that it is a vector sum of two or more vectors added together. Now, because F1 is going down, and down is my positive direction, 80 is going to be a positive. So positive 80 plus F2 is also going down. And because it's 20 of you, it's going down in my positive direction, it's going to be positive 20. 80 plus 20 is 100, don't forget your units, Newton, don't forget your direction, down. You can also say in the positive direction. Let's take that example, but now person 1 is still pushing with 80 Newton down, but person 2 is now opposing person 1. Person 2 is now pushing up with 20 Newton. You can see that this person has changed directions, still pushing the same object at the same time, but the direction has changed. You can now see that this vector diagram over here represents the situation. This would be our 80 Newton vector, 80 Newton down, and this would represent our 20 Newton vector pushing up. And note, and again, I do this in a different video, but this is a head to tail vector diagram. The head of the one vector touches the tail of the other. And in this diagram, I haven't shown you my net vector or my resultant vector. But let's focus on how to calculate it. So we can see here, I said F net is equal to F1 plus F2. Remember, always vector addition, vector sum. I need to choose a positive direction. I'm going to choose down as being my positive direction again. You can choose up. I'm just choosing down because my biggest vector is pointing down. So now when I substitute in, I can see that my 80 Newton, person number one, force vector number one, is going down. So I'm going to put F1 in as positive 80 plus, remember it says vector addition, so it's plus. Person two, my second force vector is now pointing up. Now remember, down was positive. That means up is negative. So when I substitute in F2, I'm going to substitute in minus 20. So 80 plus minus 20, or 80 minus 20, is 60 Newton. And note how it comes out as a positive answer. And remember, in my example, down is positive. So 60 Newton down, or in the positive direction. This question comes from a past paper, so let's see how this goes. It says three forces act on a body initially at rest. In other words, initially not moving. And they give you a picture. And they say, calculate the resultant of the three forces show your working. So they tell me it's a three kilogram object. I'm given force one, eight Newton, take note of the direction of the arrow, eight Newton to the right, force two, nine Newton to the left. So force two could be someone pulling the box to the left. Force one could be someone pushing the box to the right. And then force three, five Newton to the right. And they want the resultant. Remember, another word for resultant is net. And it's a force, so we're going to work out F net. You can also call it F res. Res meaning resultant, F net. Either one, same thing. Now, I've already indicated a positive direction over here, which they haven't done in the question. This you have to do as part of your answer. I'm choosing right as my positive. Now remember, we're working out the net or the resultant, and you must always start with vector addition. So it's F1 plus F2 plus F3. Remember, vector addition first, always. Then we're going to consider which way these things are pointing and substitute in with the correct sign. F1 is 8 Newton to the right. And right is my positive direction, so it's positive 8. Plus... F2 is going to the left. Left is my negative direction, so it's negative 9. F3 is going to the right. The right is my positive direction, so it's plus 5. So basically, we're saying 8 plus 5 minus 9. That is how we're going to work out our net vector. And that is 4, positive 4, Newton. And because it's a positive, that tells me that my direction is in the positive direction, which is to the right, or you can say in the positive direction.
check out the links in my description below for more physics videos, head to tail method and more. See you in the next video.